Today we are going to discuss some evidences for evolution. So last time yes. we discussed a little bit about heredity and all that. All right. Can we start a screen sharing now? All right. How many have have you seen the movie Luca? By, by have you? How many of you have seen? Can you? Can I have a show of hands? Luca. Tovino Thomas. How many of you have seen the movie? Can we have a show of hands? Well, see, here I am not talking about that Luca at all. It's L-U-C-A, the same Luca, but it is called the last universal common ancestor. If you look at uh, evolutionary theory, what the Darwin's dangerous idea or that astonishing hypothesis or the astonishing thing that is present in evolutionary theory is that all life on earth, whether it is a huge uh, teak tree or a human or a frog or a bird, all of these animals and plants have descended from a common ancestor organism billions of years ago and the name given for this hypothetical organism this imaginary organism is luca last universal common ancestor and now we know that the luca has uh, divided into two groups at first then became a group called archaea bacteria and another group became prokaryotic celled uh, simple celled animals like bacteria and then this archaea bacteria stem again split into something known as eukaryota or uh, uh, actual cells or complex celled animals which slowly became complicated became multicellular many cells stuck together to create complex organisms cells differentiated to form muscles and different parts of the body and then became ultimately complex animals like us human beings all right this is the astonishing hypothesis that evolution puts forward now what are the evidences by which we can see that this could be could actually be true okay let us see the next slide now one thing very unique about the life on earth is that it is based on carbon carbon have you heard of carbon how many of you have you heard of how many of you have heard of carbon, carbon. me okay me what is carbon carbon is it a molecule or is it an element or is it a mixture can anyone answer this question a molecule um well Okay, it is basically an element, isn't it? One of the element. It's a molecule too, but it is an element. It's a molecule too. That is correct. It's not a mixture. It's one of the elements like oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, helium, carbon. But you can see that without carbon, all life on Earth is impossible because all life is all life is on about carbon, carbon based. Why? Because carbon has a peculiar capacity to form four covalent bonds. Covalent bonds. See, entire organic chemistry is a chemistry of carbon. All right. Now, carbon has a peculiarity in that it can form complex large molecules, and complex large molecules are the basis of life. What we need to understand is that humans are can be um, compared to machines. Okay, if you compare humans to machines, each molecule in that machine or each molecule in a particular cell of a complex organism can be considered a small machine, a small part in the machine. And these complex parts 
they are called biomolecules so these biomolecules are long molecules which can be folded into various shapes so the first part the, first, the, the left part of your screen you can see a lipid molecule then you can see an amino acid then you can see a sugar which is shaped like a uh, pentagon i mean hexagon and then on the right part you can see various types of amino acids so you can see that these various types of amino acids can join together to form large molecules called proteins and proteins are the structural and functional basis of life you should know that then we use glucose and you burn them for metabolism to generate energy for our activities but you can see from the structure that all of them depend on carbon carbon is the key c that you can see the c is carbon is the key to life to all life and this points to a common origin so you can look at the next and another thing if you look at it the the amino acids there are hundreds of amino acids are possible you can synthesize you can synthesize hundreds of amino acids in the laboratory but all life has got around 20 odd amino acids only the same amino acids are repeated in all the proteins of all the animals and plants in this uh, place so that is the one major pointer that we are uh, descended from a common ancestor you can go to the next slide just uh, another example of a common structure see we are composed of multiple cells multiple units called cells and we have you um, small organisms are there which are single cell single cell the organisms are there. now these single cell the organisms are there we are there uh, other animals are there plant cells are there and all these cells have got some are enclosed in something known as a cell membrane so this cell membrane has got the same structure in everywhere so you can see it has got a, a double layer lipid protein it is called a bile bilayer lipid lipid bilayer this structure is called a lipid bilayer and um enmeshed in this lipid bilayer are various proteins these can be uh, pores or holes uh, by which uh, things are taken in and out all right but this entire cell is like a factory bound by a lipid bilayer membrane which, which can be uh, thought of as a fence and there are gates there are gated channels sodium gated channel potassium gated channel voltage gated channels and then there are structural proteins in the um, lipid bilayer which are uh, act, which act as antigens which act as adhesion molecules which act as um, things which can attract prey or catch on to prey etc so this is the common structure of all animals this is just one example if you go into the cell also you can see the same kind of thing so this also points to a common origin so we can look at the next slide now this is what is known as a deoxyribonucleic acid or dna the so last time we talked about it no do you remember um, can anybody tell me what is dna used for what is the main purpose of dna anybody any one main purpose of dna why is dna so important you can put in the chat box also can anyone tell so dna contains so, characteristics which uh, which is which is passed oh. on from our parents to ourselves to, those characteristics are passed on from our parents so ah excellent that is true that is true dna is the um heredity stuff of heredity isn't it e dna has got a, a set of instructions that codes for how we how, what we would become and how we our structure would be and even uh, how our behavior would be to an extent all right okay uh, can you see the slides okay now when you look at uh, this dna you can see that it's, it has got two strands and these when how do you how does dna work how does dna work how does dna um, give its instructions how how does it 
uh, instruct a cell to do something or how does in embryological development how does it dictate its terms or how does it act to uh, make copies of one another uh, to make another organism let us go to the next slide this is called protein synthesis all right when when what happens in a cell is that at various times and whenever required it may be during cell division or it may be during uh, usually during uh, certain situations when you require some enzymes to be made some proteins to be made some reactions to accelerate something to happen is part of the dna unravels all right part of a dna unravels and it um, creates and another uh, molecule called mrna attaches it's a single stranded thing attaches to one strand of the dna and then it detaches so this making of the mrna is called transcription transcription clearly written transcription and this uh, thing or mrna will slowly go out in of the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell all right and then a complex process occurs which involves what is known as transfer rna and ribosomes or ribosomal rna in the ribosome to create a chains of amino acids called proteins so each there is a three letters of the dna codes for three letters or three consecutive nucleotides of a dna codes for one amino acid this is the code of the dna this is how dna is written all right if you go go and read you will get an another idea i cannot tell you completely exactly how it is um, it is like this it has got various nucleotides in the dna there is a sequence and three consecutive nucleotide codes for one particular amino acid so it will be cag agc like that auc like that and not uh, agc like that ct uh, gct things like that now this is called a codon codon triplet codon triplet means three now one triplet codon codes for one amino acid do you know the very interesting thing take a tree any tree take any any animal let it be an ant let it be human let it be anything the codon which codes for these amino acids are the same in all animals for example if the amino acid threonine is called coded by one amino acid called gct something i am not sure about it this is what is universal in all animals and plants It's almost the same. So the stuff of life, or the code of life, is is written very clearly, and it is the same for all our animals and all plants. So this is one very important uh, evidence for common origin. Okay. Next slide. Now, yeah. Now let us see another important thing about uh, um, DNA is that. um i am trying to i now i'll tell you one um, little bit of a complex uh, idea slightly complex because in science we want to predict based on predictions if our predictions come right then our um, faith or a trust in our theory is strengthened this is how science progresses so there is a um, prediction here what we predict is that um Carl Linnaeus had classified organisms. Don't you remember it from the last class? How many of you remember it? What did Linnaeus do? Carl Linnaeus do? Can anyone tell me? What did Carl Linnaeus do? Anybody in the chat box? What is classification? Then that, can you tell that? What is classification? Uh, see, the thing is. Carl Linnaeus, you talk, we talk now. Carl Linnaeus uh, made a classification, family, order. You remember, we talked about Homo, vertebrates, uh, 
primates monkey family our own family then we are anthropoid apes like that so there is a pretty that was time when dna was not found out dna we knew know about dna only from 1950 okay but we know the car classification was there from the 18th century for carl linnaeus had said so he he has put uh, primates under one group monkeys under one group and the anthropoid apes like gorilla and chimpanzee and humans in another related group inside monkeys but when you look at dna and you can now measure the dna i'm now now we can uh, find out exactly the sequence of the dna in present day organs and match it with the classification which we had before based on anatomy etc can anybody move your ears anybody show of hands no anil no you cannot no. okay fine 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 that's okay can move the thing is some people can move your, move their ears i can move a little bit can you see i don't know if you can see can you see can you see did anybody see my ear moving yeah slightly moving yes yeah till only move slightly but some people can move it quite uh, very convincingly now in adult human beings there is no use for this but you will see that animals you know in which some some animals have got very good sense of hearing and it is very useful to find out from where predators are coming from to attack them and to run so you can see cows deer etc and uh, uh, rabbits etc have huge ears and they can turn it this way and that this way and that this way and that this is the function of ear muscle but you can see there is no use for a human but we have the same ear muscles as in a deer now why should this happen this is because of common origin we have vestiges of a common origin vestige means remains or remnants we have remnants of common origin in us other remnants are maybe hair body hair what's our body hair doing now we have no use for body hair i mean this tadi and this uh, whiskers and mustache and all that may, may, maybe we can say that it has got something to do with sexual selection dominance and all that again it comes in evolution but what's the point in body hair our body hair is not good enough to protect us from cold but it is still there you know and where in in animals which have got um, which are in cold places and which have got a lot of hair what happens when they are cold when they are cold their hair will rise up they are able to make their hair erect so that it traps air and keeps them warm but have you noticed when you are uh, when you are when you the, you feel cold all your hair will rise it's called pilo erection romanjam your hair will rise and uh, stand erect but uh, you our hair is too small to trap any air then why should it do that why should such a mechanism exist in us which is nothing but a vestigial structure and a vestigial behavior because we have no use now but from our common descent because of our common descent from a primitive mammal we have got this this is a, another uh, evidence for evolution okay now we can go to the next uh, slide um next slide next slide yeah now we talked about paleontology last time isn't it can anybody tell me what is paleontology what is paleontology study of bones yes study of not bones that you can say also anatomy and all that not just bone your fossils ah yes study of fossils in one way it can be anything it can be bones it can be pieces it can be pieces it can be footprints it can be imprints it can be whole animals um, frozen in snow and buried and preserved so it can be anything it can be hair it can be eggs now the study of fossils this you know as you know is one very very important uh, evidence for evolution you have millions of fossils now millions you know how many fossils are named animals named 
which are not there now how many fossils are there now can anybody guess 10000 or is it thousands is it lakhs is it uh, hundreds can you just uh, tell me is it hundreds or is it uh, thousands or is it lakhs can anybody tell me just guess anyone lakh it is in lakhs yes more than 2 and 1/2 lakhs that is 250000 animals and plants have been named from their fossils which are not there now all right and uh, we can see we can date the fossils and we can clearly see from the fossil record which animal descended from which and not all not all animals because fossilization is a rare phenomenon so we don't have excellent fossil records for showing every descent of every animal but you can see some animals descend extremely well for example you would have heard, i mean i remember uh, in 7th standard or 8th standard my uh, biology book having a evolutionary record of a horse evolution isn't it what's the ancestor of a horse called can anybody tell me i'm sure you would have learned of it in your textbook it's called eohippus or a dawn horse so we know the ho- horse we can see clearly see evidence for horse horse evolution in the fossil record we can see primitive animals we can see uh, things like archaeopteryx archaeopteryx which is uh, um, the um, what is known as a link link between um, theropod dinosaurs and present day birds so it's an ancient bird it has got teeth it has got a lot of teeth and it has got a um, along the and the edge of the wing on the tip of the wing it has got small finger like structures with claws so it's a primitive bird archaeopteryx we have just fossils for that now as i told you you can have predictions like this is a fossil for a very important uh, animal called fish a primitive fish called a tiktali now if you look at the fossil record more than 385 million years ago you can see only fish as vertebrates you cannot see any other vertebrate but around 365 million years ago after that we can see salamander like creatures with the limbs with the um, hands and feet but in between people predicted scientists predicted that there must be an animal which is in between these two, fish as well as a uh, amphibian with limbs they predicted it was only around 2004 in a canadian uh, arctic expedition that we found the uh, fossil for a uh, in between creature between fishes and an amphibian which is called a tiktali tiktali T I K T A L I K Tik Tali Tik Tali. So this Tik Tali is found at exactly the predicted fossil level, predicted level, three seventy five million years ago. So it was exactly between three sixty five million years ago, after which we know amphibians are there, and in between three eighty five million years ago, before which we know only fishes were. now we have an intermediate which is exactly in the middle 375 million years ago which is tiktali it has got modified fore limbs and hind limbs which are quite strong like limbs and which it probably used to escape from predators predatory fishes as it went into the land okay next now we have other lot of evidences and another evidence is from uh, the like um, biogeography like do you know what are marsupials can anybody tell me what is marsupial what's a marsupial animals with the pouch to hold the young ones yes. excellent who is that we fanny yeah very good very good excellent that is quite good now where are these marsupials found where are these marsupials found 
Australia. Australia, excellent. So it's mainly they are found only in Australia. You see, these marsupials are found only in Australia. Marsupials are a type of mammals which give birth very early to very small young ones, and then they take it in their pouches to be fed with milk inside their pouches, and they stay in their pouches till they are big enough to come out. But we know that true mammals like us. and our mammals in the uh, in the main uh, mainland like in the eurasian you in the asia europe and americas and africa or other places most of the mammals do not do this they don't have pouches they give rise to they give birth to larger young ones which can nurse um, have milk but which will walk around all right but so you can see that this marsupial is an older form of mammal but why are they still all in uh, australia why are all australian original australian mammals all marsupials well you know that um all continents at one point were one continent did you did you know that can you tell me the name of this continent supercontinent pangaea 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 excellent excellent so plate tectonics isn't it so we now know that the crust of the earth is composed of many plates and and they move about uh, creating different topographies at different times and all continents were at one point one continent and slowly they broke apart and australia was the first co- continent part of the first big part of the continent to break apart and so all the marsupial mammals stayed there but what happened in the mainland was that the uh, true that marsupial nature of the mammals changed by evolution and a better line of mammals called true mammals or eutheria um, developed in the mainland and then they slowly because the survival of the fittest now because they were a better model better adapted to the conditions that time slowly they replaced the all the marsupial mammals in the mainland other than opossum which is present in south america and opossum is and south america was the continent which broke apart after australia all right but it is not found in anywhere else so you are having marsupials only in australia with the exception of one small mammal opossum in south america which is a marsupial and south america broke apart after australia and in all other places there are no other uh, marsupial so this uh, these are arguments from biogeography similarly you can see that island evolution we saw in the galapagos islands last time darwin and all that so we have a lot of indirect evidence for evolution from there nowadays we have we can even experimentally uh, find out uh, study about evolution for example now we see antibiotic resistance we give antibiotics uh, initially when penicillin was found out we um, synthesized penicillin every microorganism every bacteria was sensitive to penicillin you just give penicillin and all bacteria die the and uh, patients are cured but now we have hundred literally hundreds of antibiotics why because now there are resistance to antibiotics now how does antibiotic resistance occur because of selection because when you try to kill antibiotics by penicillin only penicillin resistant antibiotics will survive it's a natural selection it's not really natural yeah it's a type of natural selection because um we are trying to kill them off and they are naturally um selecting against that so it you cannot say it is is natural selection because we are arti- what we are doing is an artificial but it is a kind of selection process by which resistant bio uh, bacteria develop and now antibiotic resistance is a big problem in medicine now people have found out that you can uh, manufacture lead resistant organs lead is a poison lead 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 is a poison but uh, some um, um, some scientists have bred crustaceans like shrimps in uh, uh, in water where there is a lot of lead okay you first culture them in um, a water in which a little bit of lead is added 
but so some organisms some offspring some will die but some will be resistant to lead so you select you naturally these people will be selected then the next generation you add a little bit more lead into the water so in this way we can breed crustaceans like shrimps which are very highly lead resistant so this is an example for evolution happening before our eyes similarly we have peppered moth in britain which is a very famous observational study uh, in which there was a, a white colored moth in britain which was common and which used to uh, roost in oak trees oak trees have you seen oak trees the trunk of the oak tree is white so they can roost there and the predatory birds which feed on them cannot see them because i mean some of them cannot see them because they are white white in color white with small dark spots but what happened in the industrial revolution was that all of britain's oak trees became blackened due to soot you know soot from factories then there, there was an interesting thing slowly the color of the peppered moth changed over decades maybe 20 30 40 years to become all of the peppered moth became black so you can imagine what must have happened when the uh, trunk of the oak trees are all black due to soot a white or a white uh, butterfly i mean moth sitting on it it will be will be easily seen by predatory birds which will eat it but there can be variations natural variations in the peppered moth which make it more darker so only the darkest will survive so that slowly over many generations all the pe peppered moth became black so these are the type of um, experiments or of direct observations by which we can see evolution in action if they people have even uh, tried um, actual experimental studies like john endless trinidadian guppy study is one in which he bred guppies in pond one pond two pond three three ponds all right and in one he put guppies alone and in one he put guppies and fish which will eat these guppies and in another pond he put uh, some other fish which will not eat guppies and guppies together he found that after around 10 generations this uh, pond in which there are guppies and fishes which will eat the guppies the brightly colored guppies all became drab and gray you can imagine what happened this is a similar thing in this brightly colored guppies in pond 1 and pond 3 which did not have any predatory fish which eat them they were naturally brightly colored all over but whenever there is a predatory fish in the pond the predatory fish can easily see the brightly colored guppies and delete it eat them so the brightly colored guppies will die out and in each generation the more drabber or gray ones will survive so that in after 10 generations almost all the guppies in that pond became gray so this is another example by which there are many other things I don't want to go into it's in one another thing is our lactose uh, lactase uh, uh, gene in humans we can see that there was uh, this lactase gene which enables us to digest milk was not present in humans 10000 years ago only infants can digest milk because we were not drinking milk but after 10000 years i mean before 10000 years before back we started domesticating animals like cows and sheep which gave us milk so adults also started drinking milk so it was a big advantage for an adult to have a version of a gene lactase gene which is active in adulthood and which can process uh, milk protein so now we can see that most adults human beings have got this modified lactase gene but if you go back to the skeleton of a person who who is 30000 years old or a 40000 years old and take dna from them it is possible now dna from them and look at the lactase gene you can see that none of them have got that variant in which which enables them to digest lactose in adult life 
So that is a one very clear evidence of evolution happening in humans. And we know this by DNA study. I think I'll stop with that. Otherwise, it will be a problem. All right. Now, let me ask one question, and which uh, some someone has to answer. You know, somebody has to answer. In a, um, we have stopped the class. Class is over. And I want to end this with a question. And then we will ask, uh, I mean, ask you to ask questions. One question. Recently, previously, say 30 years back, when I was a small, a small child, I used to go to my, my relatives who, were, who had farmlands near forest regions. Now, there are many animals in the forest, uh, like pigs, wild pigs, monkeys, etc. They will never usually come into the farmland. They will never usually come into the farmland. Very rarely only they will come. But now, if you see, you go to farmlands near forest lands, the behavior of the animal is a big problem. You have pigs coming without any fear into the farmland and destroying crops. You can have you, you have monkeys coming in and destroying crops and going. You can even you you are even having elephants coming without any fear of human being. Why would such a behavioral difference? would have happened over 20 to 30 years. Peacocks too. Yeah, peacocks. Can anyone tell me? Unmute and tell me. In three or four sentences, why that would have happened? One possible mechanism. We are not sure exactly, but depending on our theory and what I have ta taught you over two classes, why would that have happened? Anybody? Because we occupied their land. Ah, no, that even 30 years back we were occupying their land. And they had they were not they were very much afraid of coming in there. But now they are not that afraid. They come in and they create a lot of damage nowadays. There's a marked difference in human I mean animal behavior. Why would that be? Because after living with humans for such a long period of time they look they lost their fear in humans yeah i mean i i will accept that answer but with a small change now for hundreds of years people were uh, i mean cultivating crops in that these places in our country and our state but the thing is previously we were killing all animals which come into our property isn't it? Maybe 30 years or 40 years back, I remember 30 years back and all that. Any animal which come into the farmland, uh, there are a lot of ways in which they will try to catch it or kill it and eat it. If not kill it, if not eat it, at least kill it or injure it by shooting at it or creating, I mean, laying traps. So it was fitter or it is better for the animals to fear humans. Any animal which did not fear humans were dead. And they did not um, um, leave many offspring. But now what, ha what has happened is that the laws which protect animals have become so strict that humans uh, do not dare to. And they have that um, awareness also that you should not harm and the laws are very strict so they don't they, they just um, they are not doing anything to the animals if they come to the farmland yeah, at least to they are trying to drive them off but they are not able to kill them or injure them now over many generations this will lead to loss of fear of humans simply because natural selection is not happening to fear humans. Natural selection should happen only if they do not, those who do not fear humans do not leave offspring. Now, what happens is that uh, there may be advantages to coming into human territory and to eat our crops, but there are no disadvantages. So, naturally, the fear is going. So, that is one explanation. It may not be the only correct explanation. 
but that is one definitely one explanation isn't it so this is how people think in a from an evolutionary perspective all right there are a lot of perspectives but when you think about even about humans or animals or plants there is no other way to think but evolutionarily i told you know theodosius dobshansky a population geneticist said that nothing in biology makes sense unless it is in the light of evolution because that is the mechanism by which uh, we are made all right and now we'll take questions Sir, I have a doubt. Yeah, please. So, can we make some animals or microorganisms adapt without uh, giving oxygen, like adapt to the? No, no. See, you. There are already animals, not animals. There are already bacteria which do not need oxygen, like archaea bacteria, extremophiles. There are anaerobic bacteria. which do not require oxygen which they use sulfur and iron based metabolism and they they have to be our precursors because the leuca the last universal common ancestor has to be cannot be an oxygen using animal because the early earth did not have oxygen much oxygen at all oxygen all came after photosynthetic plants uh, evolved and plants give off oxygen when they you know when during photosynthesis they give off oxygen and that is how oxygen actually initially found out uh, found our way into our atmosphere in this um, large amounts so after that only oxygen breathing and oxygen utilizing organisms like us like humans developed so oxygen is not necessary for life. carbon is necessary for life water is necessary for life and as we know now any air source of energy is also def definitely necessary for uh, life so these things as we know are necessary for life. now can we i think your question is can we artificially make a animal adapted to slowly over generations make it adapted to a life without oxygen well not possible for a for example a mammal you take uh, some uh, rats for example you can only push them so far all right and how many generations will it take it will take 2 3 years to make a one or two generations so how many years it will take for you to do something the, you can only find evidence for micro evolution so called micro evolutions by these experiments like small behavioral differences in 40 or 50 generations that's all you can do okay thank you sir sir my question is there any technology developed to reproduce an animal from the fossil dna or something like that um i know that uh, i am not an expert in that but i know that um, lot of people want to do that but the, it's a very very difficult process because you know dna replication is not as simple as we think it is because dna just by getting a dna we cannot do it. there is a whole cellular machinery involved in but it is possible uh, recently i read a paper in which it is possible for example if there is an extinct form of elephant like a mammoth if you can get its dna which is very well preserved dna we may be able to put it inside the egg of a normal elephant take out the dna from that and put in all the dna from this uh, this thing that is the line of thought that they are looking at now but it is not yet we are not yet able to do it and it is we do not even know whether it is it will be possible to do it like for example dinosaurs and all that so we are very far away from that i would say but one thing is there uh, we can sequence ancient dna 40000 years back 60000 years back and all that especially human dna from skeletons and sequence it and find out human migration how it happened so that's a fascinating another story also so that is one very important thing we can map human migrations extremely well now 
depending on our present uh, human beings uh, dna plus ancient dna thank you sir dr jimmy uh, the in the sea the deepest part is called the marine trench when yeah, the yeah. new recent uh, visit of human in marine trench they have found many many bacteria i don't know whether we call it bacteria or unicellular uh, amoeba or a lot of living uh, organisms so why it is only found in that depth uh, the deepest part why it's not found uh, that much is not found any other level uh, i would think that uh, uh, the, that is one co- that's a very common thing that you find because why are there uh, animals and plants adapted to those particular conditions of course there will be because in any animal which has to go into a new area it will have to slowly adapt over years to that particular problem if you if it is a depth in the pressure the darkness all that uh, it it will get adapted and it will have to become a new species to become to be to be there so it is called ecological niche n i c h niche so it, that is a particular uh, ecological niche so like uh, we say we doctors say you know wherever there is a hole there is a scope so where you have anoscope you have rectoscope you have esophagoscope you have uh, laryngoscope you have uh, even you know otoscope so wherever there is a hole there is a scope like that wherever there is an ecological niche there will be organisms which will be adapted to that niche. that is a short answer to that question i would think thank you and also is uh, anybody has found any organism in the space anywhere other than the earth so far uh, no 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 no, no. In, thank you in, in our uh, earth uh, you can see even in the you know stratosphere people have found the floating bacteria Uh, it's a very 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 astonishing thing that the earth is full of life chock full of life chock full it is brimming over with life that you can see even 2 or 3 kilometers down into the depth of the, uh, the depth of the earth if you go you can see microorganisms in various small parts wherever water is there wherever a little bit of oxygen is there and even without oxygen you can you see that wherever there is sulfur is there anaerobic bacteria without oxygen where there is a little bit of energy to be found from subterranean vents from where geothermal uh, energy comes out you can see um, life that too sometimes profusion of life so you can see that this uh, earth is brimming over with life but at the present time we have absolutely no evidence of life anywhere else in the universe thank you doctor wonderful